welcome to our third Legend of Box Walk and a Walk Party. I'm Mika Burton. Hey. And, tonight, hey. Hey. and tonight we will be watching episodes seven through nine of The Legend of Vox Machina. And joining me, we have some phenomenal people, starting with Ashley Johnson. Go, who are you? <gasps> Hello, I'm Ashley Johnson, and I am <laughs> the voice of Pike Trickfoot. And uh, just hanging out here tonight. <laughs> Good fun, good times. Good pants are dope. And you're wearing some great pants. Mm -hmm. Icebreaker, what's your favorite color? Oh, wow, okay. Um, oh I really love blue. Okay. But I also really like orange. All right. Um, huh. And sometimes green. That is a very- I didn't pick one, but- No. Three colors. Yeah, that's three colors, but you know what? We, we'll Probably take gonna it. Probably gonna go with blue. Okay, we're gonna go with I also kind of like black. That's Ashley that, Johnson, this everybody. This was the simplest question of the night. I know. I, I, I'm <laughs> sorry. I know. I'm already messing it up. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> sorry, four, we're already going over. Four answers. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Sam Regal. Hi, everybody. I'm Sam Regal, uh, solo creator and, in, and executive producer of this show. Uh, I did it all. I'm also the chief artist of the show. Uh-huh. And chief I play artist. the Content chief creator. artist. That's yeah. the official title. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the drawing guy. And oh, wow. uh, I play Scanlan sometimes, too. That's a lot of titles you have. Uh, Icebreaker, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, uh, I think it's, uh, I, I was going to say uh, cookie dough. Uh -huh. But I think it might be uh, Chunky Monkey instead. Ooh, that's a good, oh, wow. that's a good well, choice. Going Ben and Jerry. What goes into a Chunky Monkey? My mouth. Oh. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. And don't think too. Much. I'm not gonna yeah. think too much about it. Uh, next up, we have Travis Willingham. Oh hi. Yeah. I, I'm Travis Willingham. I play Grog Strongjaw, and I am assistant to what? Chief Artist Sam Regal. <laughs> assistant to the chief. Yeah. <laughs> ACA. <laughs> C A A. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, icebreaker. Yes. Which favorite animal? Oh no! I'm a fan of red weasels right now, just because they seem to be immortal. But I like, <laughs> I like, I like otters. Did you yeah, know like that they have pockets that they keep things I in? I know. And they chirp when they get really hungry. And yeah. They and they hold cold. hands when they sleep, so they don't float away. Yeah. The hands. What do you mean they have pockets? They have little pockets, like in their in Flesh their pockets. skin, little, fur, little, pockets. little oh. fur pockets, and they put oh. like ice cubes and stuff, <laughs> and like oysters and rocks in them. Fur pockets. So oh, then, if you ask them much. to like pull out stuff, they're like, <laughs> here, You're I like, can give you a oh, gift. <laughs> anyway, oh. enough, enough about otters. Let's talk about Marisha Ray. Oh my goodness. Hello, <laughs> I'm Marisha Ray. <laughs> Voice of Keyleth, <laughs> uh, also a part of the Cool Pants Club. You are. Yep. Yeah. Just we, you know. We did the we did the pants. Yeah. Today we pants talked. Today. We're like, is it a pants day? It's it, a pants uh -huh. day. Are they chipmunks, <laughs> raccoons? What 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 is the those creature? Are pugs. They're, no. What oh, are these those? are little. Pugs? Those are tanuki. They're little tom nooks. They're little. I I they're knew what they're. They're Timmy, was. Tommy, and Tom. They're Tim. They're little nook. Oh. oh. They're animal, Crossing. Yeah, have you never places. crossed your animals, Travis? No, I've never crossed. I, I get on Laura's Island and try and move things around, and then my life is in danger. <laughs> That's evil. <laughs> That's so evil. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Icebreaker, what's your favorite season? Fall. Whoa. 100%. You with that Strong quick answer. answer. It's got Halloween in it. That's all you need. That's. That's it. It's got Halloween in it. Yeah. Done. Done. Great. Done. <laughs> and we also have our special guest here, Arthur Loftus, who is the director extraordinaire art of director. art, also the chiefy chief. <laughs> the real chief Sam. Artist. The chief to the chief, chief artist. The chief. Hello, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> I'm Arthur Loftus. <laughs> yeah. Whatever's above chief artist. The chief uh, of the chiefs. I'll take that. Yeah. Yes. yeah. That'll... Commissioner. Get me the commissioner of art. <laughs> commissioner of art. Yeah. I'll have that one. <laughs> we'll take it. We need to get you a plaque that now says commissioner Ooh. of art. Chief, chief art. Chief. Good. And okay. icebreaker for you, what's your favorite movie candy? Like when you go to the movies, what do you get? Ooh, Junior Mint. It's yeah, gotta be. Dang. All right, Dang. all right. That's a classic. I feel yeah. like we've that learned a, classic. a lot it's a about you guys today. Mint. It's a Junior Mint. <laughs> God, those are all good questions. Oh man, I never realized it. Are Junior Mints, are they underage? Is that creepy? <laughs> And without further ado, let's <laughs> jump into episode seven of Vox, The Legend of Vox Machina, Scanbo. Scanbo. Yeah. Do it. Here we go. Uh, all right, well, now that we've done uh, our first episode watch, how about some Q&A, you guys? Oh, sure. Are you down oh, for it? Are you down for it? Uh, as um, chief, I approve. 
Thank you. What, what does the chief of the chief say? What does the commissioner? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> I was going to do it when you said yes. Sorry, Sam. Sure. Uh, well, we have seen a lot of the uh, concept art for most of the characters so far, but we haven't seen any for Keyleth yet. Oh, good. So while we pop that up, Marisha, oh, what was the process of designing Keyleth for Legend of Vox Machina like? Oh, man. Weird and surreal and amazing all at the same time. Um, so it was, it was wild. I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> yes. um, what has everybody else said? Just copy and paste what they said. <laughs> well, can um, you like, yeah, give us some of your your thoughts and your notes and your ideas, put yeah, it into your baby. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, early on, you can see she was a little bit more uh, rounder in the face. It was very important for us to give her those kind of big doe eyes mm -hmm. to kind of give that representation of her just have, being fresh faced in the world and really seeing the world for the first time. Um, these earlier versions though, you know, we wanted to make sure it's really easy when you're trying to go for those fresh face, happy looks that they can start to skew a little young. So she is a young woman, but she wasn't that young, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So yeah, we were looking at those early designs and we were like, She's got a romance with Bax later, yeah. so right. let's um let's uh, age make sure it's legal. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she gotta be legal, right? Yeah, you mess with your staff and your antlers and yeah, the antlers were a big your... thing, and I think early on we tried to put in like some like flowers and the butterfly stuff, and that ended up getting so I think she had like a, a gym and all sorts of other stuff, and we ended up simplifying it, but also because of Keyleth's progress throughout the campaign, trying to keep that in mind as well, that we wanted to give her a place to grow and, and evolve. So keeping it simpler early on so we can see her progression. But yeah, I mean, she's just so cute. She's this cute little button and she's rocking those skin tight boots, mm -hmm. those thigh highs. Mm -hmm. yep. those thigh she highs. looks damn good in those thigh highs, <laughs> I just wanna say. She does, she does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sam and Travis, yes. you guys co-wrote Scanbo together. We did? Um, we did. So how did that come about? Who let this happen? Um, <laughs> who should we blame for all of the Money chaos? Changed. <laughs> Libraries were handed out. <laughs> we, uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're passionate about our characters. <laughs> And uh, I just wanted to write for myself. <laughs> uh, no, no, we, no, we. Uh, this seemed like a logical one for us to take a crack on for uh, for season one, and it was our first time ever, ever like writing a script together. That's right. Um, and it was, uh, I'll just say, that it was a magical experience. I, I, I too will say it was a delight, and I learned quite a bit in the process. Sam is a more uh, accomplished writer. I'm a bit newer. Um, but we knew that like Scambo again was going to happen, and when we were talking about episodes that we wanted to to team up on, that was the clear the clear winner. And we we threw everything at that episode. We did. I'm sure the first draft was like <laughs> 30, 10, ten pages too yeah, long, pages and long. we had lots more potions and lots <laughs> more singing. And I think at one point, I uh, uh, Scanlan was gonna like during the whole Vedmire fight on the rooftop. He was going to be scatting the whole time. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> as he yeah. fought. Um, yeah, we had all kinds of extra stuff in there. And eventually we had to get it out of our system and then we could just chop it and cut cut and trim and, and get it down to mm -hmm. where it was. Well, now that you mentioned it, I actually have a question along that line. But before we get to it, we have an animatic from that episode. Oh, okay. So let's, uh, yeah. let's take a look at that. Animatic. Um, you know what? Let me just. Uh oh. Potion number two. How would this ever help? Loads of measles. <laughs> Miss Miduki. <laughs> now the magic is made. That is. And yeah, it's actually pretty faithful. They, yeah. They yeah. A lot of great stuff. Uh, so yeah. we had some potions. We had a triceratops. We had a triceratops that was being stabbed with flaming spears. spears. Mm -hmm. We had a giant shitting in a toilet. 
<laughs> um, you said that there was some scatting on a roof, not sure, sure. as in not like more shit. shitting, no, but yeah. like. Get your mind out of the gut. I know. How how could I ever <laughs> think <laughs> that, that you guys would lower yourselves to yeah. poop jokes? Yeah. Um, are there any other bits that got left on the cutting room floor that you guys want to let us know of? Oh boy. There was a there was a, a glitter bomb at one point. There was a glitter. There was a glitter, <laughs> and there was a joke about how it's never going to come out <laughs> of the carpet. Uh, I'm trying to think what else that we haven't mentioned that got cut. Uh, I know that, like, fr uh, not really answering your question, but I know that, like, in the campaign, when Scanlan had this, uh, yes, this uh, sort of interlude, this escapade, he had access to uh, more spells than. Uh, than we currently have him in. Uh, and we didn't use a lot of the spells that he used in the campaign mm. for a lot of reasons, um, mainly because uh, we wanted everyone to sort of be on the same sort of lower lower uh, level in, in this world. But also, uh, you know, we want to make it hard for him. And if he has too many too many tricks up his sleeve, it's it's a little less dramatic and stuff. Plus, when we explored a giant like fart cloud expanding into a kitchen, we were like, "How the hell do we tell that?" It yeah. Makes, <laughs> it makes sense. yeah, he's always had this power. Yeah. And he's never used it. Only once. Only once. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, remember when we were beating out the first season in the writers' room and had everything on like the cards? And I remember there was just a singular card with Scanbo written on it, mm -hmm. and it kept moving. Everywhere throughout the season, uh -huh. <laughs> there's like the debate about if we were gonna keep it or where it was gonna go, and yeah, I remember us fighting. I remember us being like, you "Gotta keep it." It seems self-indulgent. <laughs> yeah, I keep it, but it also it. it had to be kept yes. somehow. Like, but it doesn't. I mean, I guess it does factor into the story. We figured out a way to, to make it factor. Version, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I think we moved it around from the timeline. But that's that's part of the joy of it all is like taking everything and like. Whittling it down to its essence and then figuring out which things can help each other timeline wise and mm -hmm. also things that'll set up stuff that comes later. Yeah. You know? Worked great. Yeah. yeah. It's good shit. Yeah. Uh, Sonic. Speaking of good shit, Arthur, <laughs> we have a question for you. You have the best shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You actually came into this project as a critter. You were one of the eight, 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 lots of backers. Nailed it. I can, I know math and numbers, real good like. Real goodly? <laughs> real goodly. <laughs> 88,887, yes. got it. Mm -hmm. Backers for the Legend of Vox Machina. Uh, walking into this project, were there any locations or designs that you were just itching to get to right off the bat? Uh, I was definitely thinking about Whitestone. Yeah. Like, immediate, like I, I remember knowing that like, okay, this is actually happening. Just picking up my iPad and like starting to sketch out like down shots of Whitestone and the Sun Tree, like exploring how big the Sun Tree would be. Mm. I remember we went pretty crazy with some of our earlier ideas, yeah, like like a skyscraper basically. <laughs> and Matt was like, "That's cool, but that also kind of breaks the world, so let's not go I that far." I cried that day. Yeah, I, <laughs> and I, I really wanted to do that. There was there was some cool stuff just playing around with the sizes of that and. Uh, yeah, uh, having the designers just start to figure out how to break the city down into like different portions, really trying to like give it the sense of like it's a real city. So mm -hmm. basically, like we cut it up into portions, and then every designer, I told them like come up with a backstory for this part of the city, Aww. so we can like kind of flesh out the city together. It's like we're all world building the city at the same time, um, and uh, it's all in the final stuff. So yeah, we we really had a blast with it. Can I can I brag on Arthur for a second? I, I remember Please. so we we actually interviewed Arthur uh, before he came on as art director, and he knew the show. He knew so much about the first campaign. We obviously looked at his portfolio and stuff, and his, his work was amazing, but the first two pieces that I saw of yours that you finished for the show just as concept things were the sun tree mm -hmm. and then Pike's entrance at the sun tree. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the sun tree was massive. Like he said, it was this huge sk skyscraper and epic, and the Pike drop was just this singular beam of light with Pike down at the bottom at the base of the sun tree. It was blown up on this huge, like, 60-inch TV at Titmouse, and we all sat there, and we were like, Fuck! <laughs> this is gonna be great. <laughs> and it was that. I mean, that that was one of those learning moments where we just knew that we were going to leapfrog off of everybody's like talent. What you brought, what Sunjin brings, what the board artists bring, and it just was a snowball. And there was very little that got in our way. And 
it, it was just amazing. So I, I knew instantly that yeah. we had <laughs> struck gold with Arthur. Uh, a little follow up on striking all that gold. This mansion, the backdrop to this phenomenal episode. Can you walk us through how this whole beautiful place got designed, some of the details? I think we have some art to put up to uh, highlight this discussion. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so it's all collaborative. Um, Howard Chen did these passes at the the outside of the building, and really, I told him like Vedmir is sort of this huge guy. He loves going outdoors and murdering things. So <laughs> let's go with you the know. hunting lodge. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Grace Coombe did all these interior foyer designs and really trying to make sure that it felt like, okay, this belongs in Whitestone. There's all this like sun tree symbolism built into the architecture and the tapestries. But then uh, obviously, you know, Vedmir didn't build this place. It was just a mansion that was there and he took it. So he just put trophies from all his escapades up on the walls and made it his own. I like that there are creatures that seem random almost, like you had to create a creature, then kill it, and then put its antlers on the wall. Mm -hmm. It's just you see so many things that you don't quite know what they're from. Um, there were even more, too, yeah. Oh man, we didn't get to see them? The, there were so many that oh, I boy. think Brandon was starting to say, like, <laughs> some of these are actually kind of silly looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we had to reel it back, but yeah, there, there were a lot. I know I saw a shark skull back there, and I think yeah. that was my favorite one that I saw. I think so, we have a, wi a wide of all the actual creatures that were in that room, and maybe for like an art book or something, we'll we'll put it in there. Really so cool. It I, I always imagined that shark would be like the uh, land shark that uh, Grog bites <laughs> yeah. the tongue off. Not, yeah. not literally the same uh -huh. one, but one. Or maybe it is. We don't know. Yeah. Why not? We never know. Yeah. A <laughs> uh, question for Ashley. Oh, Over here, yeah. You're just sitting there what looking all like radiant. Just hanging out. You're just hanging out. <laughs> well, you know. Crap. Um, no, no. Oh, oh, no. no. Oh, great. I thought that your oh, Irish I'm accent was oh, great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can't be three characters. <laughs> Ashley's still roll up. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, let's focus on the other character, not Kay. that. Your Dorola wasn't sure, sure, sure. phenomenal. We didn't yeah, see yeah. Pike in this episode, yeah. but we will see Pike next episode. So let's look at some pre-final Pike art, and yeah. I'd love to hear your thoughts and give us a little insight on how Pike was created for this. Oh man, show. look at that Pikey! Look at that Come big old on. face, <laughs> that man. So good. Yeah, the cape isn't there anymore. Um, there are some differences. So much of this, I feel like. This whole process obviously was incredibly exciting for all of us. And when I first saw these designs, I was like, yeah, all of them are great. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all amazing. It all works. I'm into it. Look at that little butt. Um, I love their tushies. Yeah, look at those tush. Um, obviously, there's some things that are a little bit different. But for the most part, I feel like Pike kind of stayed the same. Yeah. I mean, the mace is different, but um, I think we played with the size of the the mace was obviously massive, and the shoulder pauldrons were really yeah. big, and just brought those in a little bit, and something that little could signify when she became the Mista. war. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The beads are gone. Hard, too hard to draw. Yep. Well, not That's too fair. hard to draw. Just... They're in Scanlan's butt now. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Canonically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Canonically. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those are the beads of love. Low part of Scanlan is always with Pike. Mm -hmm. Or other way around. Other way around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I was trying to say. You keep a little part of Pike inside you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, can you do something? <laughs> <laughs> I would rescue. I was just gonna <laughs> let you keep going. I was thoroughly entertained. Well, I do have another question. Oh this comes from the chat. Um, what is it like for everyone to see some of the things that the party didn't get to see in the original playthrough? You know, like the Briarwood backstory. Oh yeah, I mean, oh, that's so cool. the most fun for me. That's like the most fun stuff to explore because. Mm. Um, the, I mean, I love playing our, our live games and stuff, but a lot of times, you know, we, I, I just want to go back and be like, well, what was happening behind the scenes when we were <laughs> making our plans and stuff, Matt? And obviously nothing was happen, happening because it's all in Matt's head. But now we get to actually see like what, what might have been happening mm. uh, uh, apart from our characters and, and with, with Pike or with the Briarwoods. And it's just so exciting to just, 
you know, imagine, imagine uh, fully, full lives are going on across Whitestone and, and, uh, and now we get to, to see it and it's really exciting and, and I hope we get to do more of that. It's such a short show, you know, uh, in terms of minutes per episode that we, we want to do that more and more, but sometimes we just kind of run out of time to do it. It helps us round out characters like, you know, Stonefell and Vedmire and Archie, who we changed entirely from the first campaign. But even just that interrogation scene, you get to see the two villains talking to each other. You understand the difference in their personalities, maybe what their responsibilities were for the Briarwoods or what kind of roles they held in Whitestone as an enforcer or, you know, the leader of the Giants or whatever it was, and then just, uh, just kind of rounding it out more. So that stuff's always fun because then you're like, you know, you're in the you're in the lab. You're in the mad scientist lab, just getting getting it all together. Yeah, it's such a big tenet of Matt when he runs his games that, you know, the players can tend to have protagonist syndrome. But you can have protagonist syndrome, but in reality, the world keeps moving and other villains' plans keep advancing and continue plotting. So it's really cool to mm-hmm. see this. It feels like when we do our like campaign wrap ups and we get to ask them all the questions. Yeah. But in an episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice reference. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> it's also kind of like, you know, when you're playing The Sims and like you can let every all the other Sims like live their lives while you're playing your one town. Your one guy. But then yeah. you like check in and on and you're like, oh my God, somebody got married. It's kind of like that. <laughs> like, oh wow, they've been doing stuff while I've been doing stuff. That's pretty cool. <laughs> one Sim can't get out of the pool and you're like, oh no. Oh no, <laughs> that whole house is dead. How did that happen? Didn't uh, feed stairs. them. Interesting. Stairs. Yeah, stairs. You need to ask Laura about Sims. It gets because dark. Oh no. She's done some stuff in Sims that I'm like, you're incredible. Yeah. Is it like I, it's dark? Okay. And she makes some amazing wanna... houses, but I would go into the room where her her gaming computer was, and she would kind of look up at me like like I had caught her doing something, and yeah. there would be like a sim swimming around a pool, and I was like, where are the ladders? And she was like, I took them out. <laughs> I was like, Why? And she was like, I want to see what happens. <laughs> And she was like, do you want to see the basement? I was like, what's in the basement? <laughs> oh, no. Well, to Laura's, to, to be fair to Laura. Nope. When I, to be fair to Laura, it, when I used to play, what was it, Zoo Tycoon, uh-huh, I would uh-huh. put a bunch of lions in one ca- tiny cage, I wouldn't feed them, and then I'd take the door away from the zoo once it was full, and then I'd delete the cage from the lions yes. and then let all the people get eaten. Yes, and, uh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, you want to see yeah. what the game does? You want to see what the game does. It was just a bunch of frowny faces. All the patrons were mad because they were being mauled. Oh, yeah. But the oh, lions yeah. were happy because they got fed. Oh, yeah. She, she's pressing the boundaries of that game. Oh, man. <laughs> so let's jump into the episode yeah. eight of The Legend of Vox Machina. I haven't even been drinking tonight. I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> my brain is short circuiting. Let's watch The Legend of Vox Machina. A silver tongue. Good God. Ironic. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Marisha. Hit play. I feel like the poor Vox Machina need a nap. You know, <laughs> no. like over yeah. over a long campaign, you get long rests, you get short rests, but in these episodes, like. When did they? When do they get to chill? You know, we we actually talked about that a lot with Arthur. Like we time of day stuff. We were like, wh- when does it turn from night to day? And there's a few of these episodes later in this in season one where it doesn't turn to day. It's just like one really long night. And they yeah. keep fighting and yeah. being fought. And I'm like, do you? Can anybody just give them a blankie? Yeah. A little cup of apple juice. Sometimes evil won't <laughs> wait eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. Shall we uh, question and subsequently answer? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. All right. Well, we ended with Ashley last time, so let's start with Ashley this time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, for the folks at home who may not be. I have a Charlie horse. I'm sorry. Oh, get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Is it in your butt? Oh, it's in my foot. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Like, like when arch. you're going to pool. Oh, wait, wait, slam your foot against the floor. What does that happen? Slam your foot against the floor. Right? Uh, <laughs> don't worry, we'll, we're not live. We'll cut this out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, is it? <laughs> Where is he going? <laughs> He's going to go stretch his foot. Oh, I love I it. Down. All right. 
anyway, so, so for Ashley, okay. <laughs> so for the folks at home who may not be familiar with Campaign One, Pike left the party for a while because you, Ashley, were filming a TV show called like Tattoo Lady or something. Something like that. Tattoo yeah. Lady. Tattooed uh, Lady. You know, Tattooed Lady. Yeah. Uh, but in the game, yeah. uh, Pike left because she wanted to help rebuild a temple. And in the show, she leaves due to a crisis of faith. Uh, what was the thought process behind that shift in the adaptation? Um, I think a lot of that, many, many reasons. Um, I think one of them, it's a little bit more of a, I think a more of a dramatic journey to follow someone in their crisis of faith as opposed to seeing Pike go away and, and building a temple. Um, and also, we sort of tied in that there was a moment in the campaign where Pike's alignment changed, and I think it was, <laughs> I, I think she took a shit on a bed, because Scanlan did, and then I think, <laughs> yeah. you, I, I think, think you, that's what it was. I you, mace, I like used the mace to, to cut somebody's throat. That's right, that's And then right. like took a shit, shit on a bed. Yeah. You mercy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> killed a bad guy and yeah. shit on a bed, yeah. And then I remember in the game, and then Mercer was like, oh, okay, that's what you're gonna do. And then my alignment ended up changing. And I didn't really know that that was, that that could happen. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was so devastated in the game. I was like, oh my God, I gotta be better. I just gotta be a better person. I can't take shits on beds anymore. <laughs> um, you can piss in beds, but taking shits on beds is Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so some of that, a little bit of the, that is tied in and sort of, you know, her journey in, in not just being a, a holy person, but also an incredible warrior, mm. a holy warrior mm. and, sort of figuring out that you can stay close with your friends, you can have your debaucherous fun, but um, if your faith is strong and you're strong in your friendship, you're gonna be, you're gonna be great. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Okay. So, yeah, but it's, it was, there, was, there was reasons for that, but I think it's, it's definitely a more interesting and dramatic journey to go through that. And what was it like for you getting to actually act through that journey since it was kind of just implied before? Yeah, it was very fun and also it was a nice way to kind of rewrite history, I guess. Mm. You know, like I, there was a lot of the campaign that I did miss and especially a lot of the Briarwood arc, which was one of my favorite to watch. Um, so it was fun for us to be able to, yeah, rewrite Pike's history and you know, give even more of a reason of why Pike went away. And so that in my head, I'm like, okay, yeah, even building a temple, but she also totally went to go talk to the Everlight during that time. And you know, it's, yeah, it was special. It was special for me. Aww. Yeah, it made, 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 made me happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this question is for everyone. Uh, we all know that death and resurrection in TTRPGs is fairly common. Rest in peace to all of our various characters yeah. who have died. Um, so, can we walk through the choice to give Cassandra's resurrection both weight? It was very serious. We saw some of the technical elements, but also there was some humor at the end. Mm. Yeah. I, I, also, I don't know if it was as much of a, a, a resurrection as much as just showing how Keyless healing magic could be different from Pike's, right? Utilizing nature, how it was different than you know calling upon a, a deity. Um, but, you know, I think one of the things we discussed early on was, you know, in, in our campaign, we all died <laughs> at least once. Some of us by jumping off a thousand foot cliff and turning into a small fish. Um, <laughs> and we, we knew also that, like, you have to make sure that, you know, those moments are, are important. Otherwise, if you can just die and come back and die so and come funny. back, there's not a lot, of, a lot of stakes. So we try and push it as close to that line. Uh, as we can, so there's some real danger for our our heroes. Yeah, yeah, that's that was key. We we can't we can't have a death in every episode, mm -hmm. uh, even though that's probably how it would have worked out, <laughs> uh, because it just makes death sort of meaningless. Was, so we yeah. we spread it out and made it actually an impactful moments and stuff. And who knows? Maybe maybe we will start killing off our main characters. There's still a few more episodes of this season. Maybe and we should. Maybe we'll switch yeah. things up. Maybe yeah. it's just being too safe. 
Yeah. Or at least kill Luke again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my hey. god. <laughs> He's like, please. <laughs> no. I'm Too your real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Marisha, I have huh. a question for Yeah. Huh? What? I have a question yes. for you. Well, are you, are you, are you ready? ready? I'm ready. You ready? I'm good. All right. <laughs> uh, you, you said before that Keyleth is very much going through a coming of age. In this in this story, uh, in these past few episodes, you see her come into her power more and more. As we pointed out, Keyleth really came in clutch in every moment. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit more about that journey for her and that journey for you? Oh man, it's been so great to revisit because, like, I've said this before. There's plenty of panels out there where I've <laughs> I've said this, but um, I, I kind of feel like, in a weird way, I grew up a little along with Keyleth mm -hmm. like in my adulthood. So kind of revisiting that and retracing those steps and getting to really appreciate almost from like a third party perspective, her journey again. But uh, we talked a lot about just making sure the pacing of it made sense, you know, over, cause Keyleth was such like a long game character, but you know, 400 hours versus 22 minute episodes is a little bit different. So kind of tracking each step of when she kind of becomes more confident in herself. And so much of that too is like reflective in her peers and the rest of Vox Machina believing in her and trusting in her. And you've seen so many of those little moments with her pep talk with Percy and the keep and four. And then at the end when, you know, Pike is like, like You're their light now, and all these like little amazing moments that have kind of added to those steps in her kind of getting more more confident in herself and her ability. And then yeah, it's kind of stuff like Sam was talking about, kind of trying to track all of these characters and how they grow and progress, not just in their powers and abilities, but as people as well. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I'm rambling a little bit, but Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, amazing voice director, mm -hmm. I have to shout her out too, because she was really great at like having that removed perspective and being like, nope, like Keyleth was a little bit more insecure here. And then there was also times I would kind of fall into insecure Keyleth moments later in her story. And Mary was really great to be like, no, like, like Keyleth Flex here, like, say this moment with confidence, she's earned it mm. at this point. So yeah, it was uh, definitely kind of an interesting study to, to follow that track. And we're obviously excited to see where she goes from here, going mm -hmm. from accidentally lightning striking a lightning dragon to Right. Saving yeah. somebody's life and then transforming into a tiger. Right. <laughs> like con controlling the yeah. clouds and the sky writing and stuff. I feel like that was a moment too where it was like, ah, oh, I've been wanting to do this for a while and, and Mary being like, don't make her panicky in this moment, like yeah. make her own this moment. Um, so yeah, it was, it was good stuff. How good cool stuff. would that be in real life if you could like, like just tr change the clouds into any sort of shape or whatever? It is a dream of mine yeah. that I have on the nightly. How would you utilize it, Sam? Dicks and balls. <laughs> <laughs> We all knew. We all knew. We all knew. We just wanted to hear him say it. Your prediction ball. What's that? Don't worry about that, honey. I'm the chief artist. I'm the chief artist specifically of dicks and balls. Question for Arthur. Speaking of art. Are you single? No. Second question. Uh, in this episode, we get a look at the inside of the Temple of Everlight. Uh, what was your process in creating this temple? Yeah, um, wow. It, it went through a pretty long journey. We started on it really early, like development. Uh, Joseph Martinez took a lot of passes at figuring out how the exterior would work. And, you know, there's just so many cool details that sort of tie into the fact that it's the Everlight, so it's all about, like, oh, holy what's fire. This place? Um, oh, yeah, oh, there, that's Joseph's work. So, yeah, we were playing with this idea of like mirrors on the outside of it on the ground, kind yeah. of like reflecting up into it, so like, mm -hmm. a, like a solar collection farm. And then, yeah, basically, I was talking to this other art director, Tim Mouse Kangley, and he was saying like, what if all those went up into like this orrery, but the orrery, instead of having like a constellation, is just like a series of, uh, you know, 
magnifying glasses. So it's almost like this crazy like laser sauna that just funnels the power of the you know the sun and holy fire flame down into um, yeah down into the middle. The wow, recipient. that's yeah. so much more involved than, yeah. than, <laughs> than I thought it was. She's, she's having a bad time in there. Yeah. She yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm getting burned by these <laughs> It's a spiritual <laughs> like, ritual that she's going through, obviously, and but it's also like physical, like she's sweating and she's got to endure this this heat that's that's bearing down on her and, and the sunlight, so uh, it's, the it's Cleansing cool. flame. Totally. Redemptive flame. That's so cool. Yeah. Vikram cool. praying. Yes, mm. yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, for Arthur, this is from the chat. They would really like to know, what was your favorite location that got realized in the show? Ooh. Oh, oh man. God, what a good question. Yeah. Uh, well, honestly, we we spend so much time in Whitestone, and I'm really, really happy with how it all came out. Especially, uh, what we're about to watch is uh, a very good case for how we really fleshed out the city and you get to experience a lot of it this season and I'm just so happy that it came out as, as good as it did. Yeah. That was such a good answer. You didn't talk about the back three episodes of season one or I anything know. else. <laughs> that was so I good. you wanted to. Uh, I know. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Again, I have not had a drop of alcohol tonight. I don't know what is wrong with me, but are you ready for our final episode? Yeah! Yes. I can't hear you! Let's yeah. do it! Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh. What fun. Holy what fun. What a good show we made. Oh, oh no. man. God, how fun. All right, guys, these are the final questions of the evening. The final questions! <laughs> <laughs> This is a weird mood tonight. I, I'm loving it, perfect. I'm loving it. Perfect. All right, question for all y'all. Shadows at the Gate felt like a mini horror movie. Similarly, Tide of Bone feels like a mini zombie apocalypse movie. Loving it. Uh, it doesn't look too easy to do an animation. We kind of discussed this a little bit in the episode while we were watching, but please tell us all about the blood, sweat, and tears, and tears, and tears, and tears <laughs> that it took to pull all of this off. Yeah. L a lot of blood. Yeah. Oh, um, more blood than tears? You wouldn't believe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, huge, huge props to the character team, uh, ironically. Um, yeah, the character team really knocked it out of the park. Yeah, Phil, Nick, all those guys had to come up with so many variations on those zombies to make this episode possible. And then they just give that to Rev, and Rev has to draw every frame of it. So it's, it's crazy, and then anything that isn't work by the time it's coming back, the post team has to really sell it. So they throw so much extra sauce on top to make it look good in the final image. Uh, yeah, it's it's hard at every step of the process, but everyone came together to make it look that good. It Super proud. Really good, super crisp. And like we said before, the fact that you can see so many different zombies, it never looks like there's a repeat. I'm pretty sure by the end of it, everybody who was involved in this never wanted to see another zombie again for yeah, as long as they live. <laughs> <laughs> different movement cycles too. Yeah. Just like, man, they just really, really went to town. And it Especially was like. because we were like, oh, it'll just be a 2D show. And then right. we got into it, we're like, Oops. just kidding. We're sorry. But it's just like, also all the zombies that were attacking seemed like they had different personalities, different like, gates, different speeds, some of them were more brutal than others. Like, that's just so much to consider. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> yeah they're staggered, so their timing is different. Yeah, uh, yeah th there's a lot to go in there to make it feel organic and real. Yeah, yeah it wasn't Michael Jackson's throw. Sunjin was l asking us, like, in one of the early meetings, like, so having, you know, this number of characters on screen a lot is gonna be super challenging, but, like, it's doable. As long as like there's no like armies or anything, <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> real conversation. <laughs> like a battalion and maybe a horde. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're not an organized army, <laughs> so He's like, that's Shandling. even worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Define army. <laughs> um, question for Ashley. Before we get into the question that I have for you, I do want to show a little bit of an animatic for Pike's return, Ashley. You might want to pay close attention because uh, this involves you. Okay. And it relates to you in a way okay. that we're going to discuss. There's a hidden frame Don't. that you have to find. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't fuck this up. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Well, pay a... close attention. Hold on. Oh, put the glasses on. I think I know a sign when I see one. Ah! 
Hey, uh, what's she doing? Watch. May your weapon strike with the divine virtue of the Everlight. Now go crush some fucking heads! So the, the whole connection I was trying to get at is, while during campaign one, you weren't actually there, Pike was astral projecting, you were astral projecting Hello. via Skype. Hello. That was the, <laughs> See what that we was did? involving you. See did what you, we did? Did you, you know? I picked up on it. You pick, did you pick up I on did. it? Yeah. I did. You yeah. know, it was, it was kind of a, a funny nod to all of the Skyping in. Yeah. It was the, that was how Matt sort of, during the game, he was like, you're astral projecting. I was like, ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you talk about a little bit what's the difference between Pike's Grand Entrance and the series, and why did you make those changes? Like... Yeah, was it in terms of being different in the game? Yeah, you came in, yeah. you came in on foot, like leading a wing of the resistance from the outside of the city. Like we were up on a, up on a wall on a perch, and we saw you coming in on the right. uh, in the distance. But it's animation. You yeah, gotta be able. You gotta flex. Look. I think yeah. there was like a. Yeah, I think in the game. I think I took the mace and like hit, did like a Thor style, like boosh. But this was this was such a. Uh, I mean, it plussed it. It just, I mean, yeah, since we can do it in animation, it's like, well, let's make it like, if we're doing astral projection, make let's it make extra. it a little, let's make it extra. Yeah. 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 Coming out of the fucking sky. It's yeah. Pretty, pretty rad. Totally. And help it, like, you know, putting holy weapons on, on everybody, yeah. you know, blessing everybody's, uh, I guess I don't know what that would be. Yeah, Everlight gave you a big old gift card <laughs> after, yeah. your, after your chat. Yeah, and I yeah. spent that gift card. Yeah. Kind of like Oprah, you're like, and you get a holy weapon, and yeah. you get a holy weapon, and you get a holy weapon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what do you need, boo? Okay, all the stuff? <laughs> so Everlight's like a sugar mama? Is that, <laughs> is that what we're getting out of here? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah I like it. I'm gonna go with that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Um, at the end of the animatic, this is for everybody, we saw a glimpse of those super creepy undead giants. Um, let's talk about how great those designs are. I know we have some art to throw up and that we will see in a second, but can we talk about the process of those? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of the time when Phil and Nick are building out these kind of designs, they'll have kind of like a base body and they're just working with ways to make them really feel unique, like throwing sort of like found object armor on them and stuff like that, and just making them feel like they really can belong in that world. Um, yeah. yeah. I loved the uh, the like edge of the barrel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pauldron that one of them has. So it's smart. So cool. You can yeah. see like the giant they were before Undeath mm -hmm. took them, yeah. right? Like, oh yeah. yeah. And the muscle and sinew underneath uh, some of the skin and stuff. It's super, yeah. super cool. The beard and the hairstyles and the I different love... levels of decay, like the injuries to them. Yeah. Yeah. The guy with the with only the few strands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then Vax uses those to climb up. Yeah. That's brilliant. The body. So I love good. that. Also the creepy undead yeah. faces. Like the like giant grin and the bug eyes. There's something that's just so unsettling yeah, you're about like, oh, that. You're just gonna eat me. Yeah. 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 And then when Vax like rips Head back, but the, the expression stays, stays the same. Yeah. That's what's just so un just, unnerving uh, about uh, them. Yeah. Like they're not <laughs> reacting to being torn to shreds. No. It's so creepy. I think we did yeah. some ADR for the giant where you're just like, nah. It's too much. I wish you kept that in. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, Marisha. In this episode, Vax finally reveals his feelings oh. for Keyleth. It's very precious. It is an iconic moment from campaign one. You and Keyleth uh, seemed completely blindsided by it. Like Matt had to cut to break. It was total chaos. Everybody <laughs> loved it. Um, but what was it like revisiting that moment and distilling it and crunching it down for the animated series? Yeah, you know, Keyleth, uh, she doesn't have a lot of experience in the like dating world what? and the realm. So she doesn't really, you know, pick up on those type of uh, cues, you know, super wise, charisma's her dump stat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, and it was the same in the campaign where I remember talking to Laura, I think at break, and I was like, I didn't know where, how long has this been going on? And she's like, for like fucking forever, for like 40 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> and he would do little things where he would just be like, 
Uh, yeah, and I, uh, Vax sits next to Keyleth. Or like in our lineup, he'd be like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna get in front of Keyleth and all these things. And I was just like, cool, yeah, that's our lineup. Like not <laughs> thinking about it in any way. Um, so kind of seeing that here of that like, you know, hey, are you okay? Hey, we make a pretty good team. Yeah, we do, we're cool. It just kind of <laughs> keeps going, just has the no city clue. Consolation, we didn't, uh, I didn't pick up on it either, because when that confession came out during the game, I think we all escaped into our shirts, and, <laughs> into our house, and we hid behind monitors, and we were like, what is happening? <laughs> this is unprecedented! Yeah. <laughs> it was, though, it was. 100%. He kind of like, he trailblazed like in, like yeah, character romance, romance. Yeah. Yeah. hadn't yeah. really done any of that we shit before. Yeah. I would love to say we're constant professionals all the time. We were no. not. No. No. We're like, fuck! <laughs> That's like another oh, yeah. thing in the game where I didn't know you could do that, but I don't know why you couldn't. Sure, right. yeah. yeah. Same. But it was just like, wait, 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 wait. You can be with people uh -huh. in the game? <laughs> Our characters can be together? Uh-oh. Yeah. Floodgates open. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's wild. But yeah, and I love the adjustments that we made because, I mean, it was very important too. We talked a lot about like the timing of their romance and not wanting to rush it too much, so. Yeah, when we were playing the campaign, like you said, it, it got to sort of evolve over 40 episodes yeah. to, to that point or, yeah. you know, or, and even countless hours even before we started streaming. Um, and which made it an earned moment that really made sense and paid off and everything. But we're only uh, eight and a half, yeah. 20 minute episodes in yeah. at this point. So it uh, it definitely, uh, it happened. You guys just saw it, but uh, it, it seems like it needs a little, Still a little, a little bit more time to, to yes. fully blossom uh, in, in the timeline of our animated series. Yeah. So we're gonna just, Give it, give it that time. And I think like, it subverts it, you know, it subverts like the kind of tropes of usual, like, oh, what, my prince, I'm suddenly taken by you. She's like, what the fuck, no. Yeah. Like, none of this is appropriate yeah. right now. There's yeah. zombies. Like, we're not talking about this while there's zombies trying to kill us. You're seriously gonna fuck with my head when I need to, like, live? <laughs> not cool. Not cool. So, he just yeah. trauma dumped in the middle of a zombie yeah. fight. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, just because we're gonna die, I just want you to know I love you. It's like, no, dude. Don't like, let's actually Whoa. talk about yes. this. Like, that's not fair. <laughs> there's a right way in a wrong way, and, and I'm not gonna tell you which one this is. <laughs> but I am gonna walk away. Yeah. <laughs> let you think about it. <laughs> yeah, I got, Keyleth is the first in this game, you know, and Vax is in the campaign, but in the show, Keyleth and I walks away oh. first. Mm. Oh. Yes, okay. yes, you're right. I forgot that. Yeah. We love it. Trendsetter. We, love it. Uh, we were trying to talking, <laughs> we were kind of talking earlier about how the floodgates opened after the first romance confession happened. So for Ashley and Sam, Pike and Scanlan, what the fuck? <laughs> What's going on there? What the fuck is up I with mean, that? I mean, I feel like we're destined to be together. But, I mean. But I don't feel that you feel that, that way at all. Oh boy, <laughs> Who knows? let's have it out. I mean, it's, it's, gonna take, it's gonna take some time, you know? I feel like Pike. <laughs> 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 I, I think it's gonna uh, take Pike a little time to sort of make her way to. <laughs> Walked into that one. Uh, well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, just like in the in campaign one, Scanlan uh, probably came on a little too hard at, at first and <laughs> backed off a little bit at some point, and we'll, we'll see how it, how it develops. It was long game. Pike, it Pike was Pike long game. Scanlan were, were definitely long game. Start so. off with the marriage proposal, see where it goes from there. Totally. <laughs> I think that that's a really great advice for anyone. Don't. Yeah. Don't listen to that. <laughs> it's not great advice. Scanlan, uh, you know, has always sort of uh, uh, thought of himself as a very skilled uh, romanticist with the with the uh, with the people he has his eye on. Um, but but he actually, you know, he always cared about Pike and probably just doesn't know what to do in that situation. Sure. It's easier to just like get someone to hook up with you, but it's it's harder to like get someone to actually like care about you, so. It's easy for one night stands, it's hard for matters of the heart. That's right. Mm -hmm. oh, there it is. Wow. <laughs> so emotional. <laughs> <laughs> we got um, some questions for chat, if you guys are down to answer a few of those. We down. I don't know. Oh, well too bad, cause okay. it's gonna happen anyway. Let's hear them first. 
Uh, for Arthur, Let's hear him. <laughs> <laughs> were there any specific references, like films or artists, etc., that inspired or influenced certain art choices in terms of style, framing, etc.? Oh, wow. oh crap. <laughs> uh, there were three years ago, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like uh, working in animation for a long time, you kind of take the last show with you a little bit, mm. and and I certainly took some of the artists with me too, <laughs> so it was hard to not have Voltron in the back of my head while we were starting, you know, development on this. And I even brought my fellow background designer William New over, and we, you know, figured out a lot of like the architecture of Whitestone together, like what just a building on the street would look like, what a building in Iman would look like. He he's just super influential to me as a person, as an artist. Um, so yeah, there's there's definitely like ties back to things that we had already built together, but we did try to push it forward into something that no one had ever seen before, and definitely just playing with the sizes and scales of stuff and just making throne rooms way bigger than people expected, and you know, however we could surprise the fans and give them something that they didn't see coming. Nice. And a question for everybody. What is your favorite game to show moment or scene so far? We can go game to show to moment. Show yeah, so like moment. game to show. Oh, wow. Oh, Boise. That is a great question. I, I personally love the adaptation of the dark spirits coming after Vox Machina once they've been restrained to the keep. It, Desmond wasn't, wasn't in it as much as he was in the, the campaign, but the idea was still there, and it was just great getting to trap the characters, for lack of a better word, so that we locked in on those character beats and how they relate to each other and how the different faces of their personality show up depending on who they're talking to. Um, it was just, uh, that whole episode was just so great. But in terms of like big action moments, I, Sam remembers in the writer's room, I was always harping on, on Pike's return. Yeah. Just like, mm -hmm. just had a visual of it in my head from, from the get-go and how we could just make it so, mm. so crazy. Awesome, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the best Akira bubble ever. <laughs> Man, right. I, I feel like it's hard to top the reveal of the bodies on the Sun Tree. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, that, that stuck with us in our heads as players so deeply, and I think the fan base as well. And that was kind of when we all, that was another game changer moment where you're like, oh, what does Matt have going on in his head? I fucked up. Did you just string kids <laughs> from a tree? Holy shit. Uh, it was just so impactful in the moment, so seeing it realized was really cool. Oh. That wasn't me. That was, uh -huh. that was, that was it was me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yep, Hawaiian barbecue. You're you <laughs> a little of that tuna mac. <laughs> Spam every yeah. time. <laughs> every time. Every time. Boy, both of those moments, uh, you know, Pike coming in was special for me. Um, the Sun Tree moment, I still think, is is pretty powerful. Um, also, just in general, seeing Gilmore for the first time. Oh, yeah. mm. First time we go into his oh, shop yeah. and seeing that, I think it's it's glorious. Oh. I see what you did there. I see, I see what you did there. Uh, I, I obviously uh, seeing my character up on a roof with flames and rain and stuff, fighting a big giant dude is uh, pretty amazing to to know that like a few years ago we were we were just sort of improving it on the spot, and now it's like a thing that people can watch and see for themselves is is pretty magical. Um, I would also say that like moments like. The, um, the you know I love you moment under the tree uh, are so cool because because they are different from the the from campaign one you know like in in some ways I was always pushing this in the writing room also like we've t we've told a story already once we told campaign one it's great you can go watch it it's awesome <laughs> so I'm really excited for any any moments that. We can we we change just a little bit, um, still honor that moment, but but tweak in a, in a slightly different way so we can tell a brand new story. That's really exciting to me too. Yeah. As a critter. Uh, man, uh, there's too many to really pick. Uh, I will say, runner-up is definitely Gilmore's. Just 
I, I worked that area. There were like three or four of us working on it, but I kind of put the final gloss on all the paint and just getting to really flesh out every angle of that shop was that so, so, oh my wonderful. God, thank you. <laughs> Like, yeah, we, we really went nuts. You should not make an area that detailed. On <laughs> <TV budget. laughs> we went it's crazy. very detailed. Yeah. yeah. So many Easter eggs. That's like what you would do in the campaign guide, and we tried to do it with yes. the background. Yes. It's crazy. Yes. So, I and, you know, honestly, we, we tried submitting it at one stage, and, like, Chris basically came back, Crispy, and said, like, you know what, guys, like, I think you should put a little more on. And we were like, okay, let's do it. So I, I actually spent a whole weekend just like painting over everything. Oh oh it was God. so worth it. Cause yeah. yeah, I'm really happy with it, how that came out. But I gotta say my number one moment hasn't come out yet. So I really <laughs> hope you guys see it soon. Cause it's yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna you gotta be- tune in on Friday. In. It's gonna be pretty fucking good. <laughs> Oh. All right, this is unfortunately our final question no! of the evening. No! It was yeah, going to be a really cute reveal for the end of the stream, but somebody, Samuel, brought it up <gasps> before we got to the question. Was, was it was it my my Charlie horse on my? On no, my foot? it was the fact that somebody got married this weekend. Oh. Oh. I was yeah. gonna do this whole cute thing where I was gonna go. So did you do anything fun this weekend? And then you were gonna go. Well, I got married. And we were gonna go. What? <laughs> but somebody. Wow. Brought oh, attention wow. to it. All right, I'll sing. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> This no. note, in honor of your recent nuptials, we have a little surprise oh, for you. Oh my God. God. Bring out the champers! I didn't oh! know. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh. Thank you, Kyle. producer Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. Oh, Everybody, Kyle. Take, take a cup of bubbly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you pass it up. You. Yeah, Is this you. your bubbly? Pass it back. Pass yeah. it back. Pass One more Ashley. Ashley. Sparkling Ooh. apple juice. All right, everybody. <laughs> to Arthur. Mm -hmm. yeah. To your lovely bride. Lynn Sarmiento, I wish you were here. Oh, <laughs> cheers, 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 congratulations. Minus eyes, minus eyes. Oh, yeah, minus eyes. Arthur, did you design your own invitations? My wife did. <laughs> of course. Hey, yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I should mention, she's a spinographic designer of freelancing on the show, so. She designed Gilmore's Goods logo. She helped me figure out the logo oh, for the show. She's, she's been a huge part of it from the start. And every time I need to figure something out, graphic design related, she's the first person I ask. Oh, that's so great. There's too much Come on. I hey. know. This is a lot of love. This is a lot of love. Oh. This, is, this has been a cute episode. Well, this does it tonight for tonight's watch party. I want to thank our guests, oh, yeah, Sam, yeah. Travis, Marcia, oh, Ashley, yeah. and especially Arthur for joining us. You have been yes. such a freaking delight. Thank you so much for being yeah, here. Thank you for having me. Wait, we I only have you're... one more of these, right? Yeah. yeah. <gasps> I know. Three Wait. season two episodes left. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Genuinely, I hope you're proud as fuck. I, yeah. You, you and the rest of the team. You've been like, killing it. We are all so proud. I guarantee you, they're all watching right now. We have a group chat with the crew, and they're just so happy to be a part of this. And thank you for acknowledging their hard work. Are you kidding? Yeah. Yeah. Every, every, every animator and artist and anybody who ever worked on the show watching out there, seriously, you guys, like this champagne is not only for your nuptials, but it's for you. Yes, Absolutely. You guys have been working you. so hard. I feel like we've all said it before. This has transcended just animation. It's truly a love letter and a work of art. And I just, I want all of you to get sleep as well. I, I, I feel like you're probably watching this and working at the same time. So like, just go take a nap. You deserve it. Um, and also thank you to everybody at home for staying up to watch along with us. Yeah. We know not everybody has convenient time zones for this, but be sure to join us next Tuesday, February 22nd. That will be 2 22 uh, at 7 p.m. Pacific for our final watch party, where we'll be watching through episodes 10 through 12, 12 being the finale of The Legend of Vox Machina, with Matt, Sam, Talison, Travis, and special guest, Gray Griffin, what? the voice of Delilah Briarwood Ooh. herself. We will need to bleep some things. <laughs> <laughs> or not. So tune in to see what doesn't get bleeped. Good night, Critters. Bye. Bye. Bye.